Hey, hey YouTube, my name is Heather and this is my channel, Mama in Motion. If you're new here, I'm on a weight loss journey to lose 100 pounds post hysterectomy, which occurred in October of 2021. I started my new weight loss journey in June of 2022 and I've lost 20 pounds so far. So in this video, I wanna talk about uh, my bipolar disorder and how I've been dealing with a depressive episode and uh, how it's just squashed my motivation and desire to do anything. Um, so if you're not interested in seeing that part, you can go ahead and skip ahead. I have the timestamps down below. Um, I also want to talk about my weight um, and uh, a few other things. I went to my doctor appointment uh, regarding my gallbladder. Sorry, I have notes here in my little page here. Shine bright. <laughs> I wanted to just talk about a few things that I've been uh, dealing with. So, uh, yeah, so I'm sorry. I'm like really having a hard time focusing on how I want to go about talking about these things. Uh, they're really personal things and I just, I I want it to be okay to talk about them even though I don't necessarily feel super comfortable talking about it and I'm feeling kind of depressed today and I just don't have the energy to do much of anything but I really want to get this video out there and um, just update you guys because I'm so late on posting my video this week. So it's important to me that I follow through and get this done even though I haven't been feeling up to it and I've pushed out um, publishing this video for a few days or even recording the video um, because today is now Sunday and I usually record my video by Friday. Um, but anyways, it is what it is and I am sorry that this is late if you're one of the people that are waiting for my videos to come out and follow me. Um, I really appreciate you and I just want to say thank you for coming back and to anybody new here that's still watching thank you for checking out my video so uh, let's go ahead and dive into the weight so for my weekly weigh-in I weighed in this week at 229 pounds um, I was weighing in around 231 pounds uh, a couple days before that and uh, I've just been drinking a lot more water and so my weight has been going down steadily again um, I believe that I have been holding or retaining water um, because I have been eating more junk food and um, salty things I haven't really been eating in excess but I don't normally eat those things and so whenever I reintroduce them into my diet I do notice that my water weight goes up and so my weight goes up also the next day and it takes a few days to get rid of that weight um, but it's not like I'm consuming a pound of food you know or 3500 calories a day so that I would be gaining you know the weight um, but this is pretty common in my journey I'm just at a lower weight now dealing with the same water retention issues and I had quit taking my magnesium supplements which um, I believe are helping with the water uh, the water weight uh, but I had quit taking them because I was dealing with a lot of nausea and it's been really hard to swallow that giant magnesium pill pill um, it's a it's a pretty large pill and uh, it's hard to get it down and it makes me gag sometimes and it can make me actually throw up and uh, I'm already dealing with being nauseous and throwing up sometimes because of the apparent gallbladder issues that I'm having. So I didn't want to add to that or make it worse and it was just uh, not something that I wanted to do. So I stopped taking them for about a week and a half and uh, I'm now back on that on them. As of uh, yesterday I started taking the magnesium pills. and. Um, I started drinking more water again uh, just to kind of detox my system um, from all the sweet things that I had been eating because I was celebrating my birthday and I had leftovers for a while from that and I've just been realizing with this gallbladder situation that I cannot be eating like I normally do. <laughs> 
So, like, they describe it online as, like, if you have a gallbladder situation or, like, symptoms, that it's it, it's brought on by, like, eating a pound of fried chicken and, you know, greasy foods like that. But it seems to also be brought on by eating small amounts of fatty foods like butter or milk or cream, um, red meats, maybe bacon, things like that. So it's not just eating excess of things, but it's eating certain, you know, a, a regular serving of things and still having gallbladder attacks. So if it isn't my gallbladder, I'll be really surprised. I'll also be bummed out because I still won't have an answer to what it is. Um, but I went to, I'm just going to get into the gallbladder part now. We talked about my weight. Let's talk about what's going on with my gallbladder. And then we'll talk about what's going on depression wise. With my gallbladder, I went to the ER a few weeks ago and then I scheduled an appointment with my primary care physician and I didn't get in to see my primary care provider until November 17th, which was this past Thursday. Um, whenever I saw him, he is pretty convinced that it is my gallbladder. He says ultrasounds don't catch everything that can be wrong with it and that he believes that it has more to do with the sphincter of OD um, that is causing it uh, to not like release bile the way that the sphincter should. Um, so I don't fully understand it, but it's like um, a dysfunction in the gallbladder instead of uh, a gallstone. So the ultrasound that I had done in the ER didn't detect gallstones or gallbladder sludge, but that doesn't mean that something wasn't wrong and that the scan just didn't catch it. So my doctor is referring me over to get a HIDA scan, um, which is H-I-D-A scan. And uh, it reminds me a lot of Hydra from the Avengers. I don't know why, but every time I'm like the Hydra scan, I'm like Hydra. So <laughs> anyways, um, I am, I'm okay with getting the scan. It just sucks because apparently it's an hour and a half long and um, it can um, cause your symptoms to like flare up because the sphincter is um, pushing out the substance that they pump into your veins. Um, so I'm hoping that I'm not one of the like 30% of people that ends up in pain during the procedure because uh, I really don't want to be in like a lot of pain and if it's just pushing out a lot of stuff I'm like eek is that gonna hurt like I'm kind of nervous about it because a lot of people are like asymptomatic with their gallbladder issues but I am not one of those people I think I'm pretty in tune with my body since I've had you know eight surgeries and I just I can tell when something isn't right and I knew something wasn't right with my gallbladder like a month ago um, but I was just pushing it aside and ignoring it because it wasn't so bothersome that it really had me concerned enough to go to the doctor. Um, but after the attack I had that lasted like 48 hours and sent me to the ER because my doctor told me to go to the ER, the ER to get checked, um, I just, uh, it's been a lot, it's been worsening and it's become more frequent. But the gallbladder symptoms are there and I believe it's called the uh, like gallbladder dyskinesia or something like that if I recall correctly it has some fancy medical term name of course so um, there's that and then my doctor also believes that I am low on iron and B12 and so he ordered a blood test for me to get done um, but at the time his nurses or the lab at his office was on lunch and I didn't feel like waiting around so I'm just going to get it done at a later time. But he told me that I could totally just start taking um, iron like folate uh, pills or prenatal um, and then like B12 vitamin um, and then it should help with my fatigue and uh, that would be really nice. So he said I could do that if I don't feel like taking the test. Um, but I'm curious as to what the test says, so I want to get it done as soon as possible so I can start taking these over-the-counter pills. But I don't want to take the over-the-counter, you know, prenatals until I know that the test is done because I don't want it to affect the results of the test. 
So um, there is that. Let me just double check. Oh yeah, and the test, um, the testing for the folate and the B12 makes a lot of sense because I have a gene mutation. Um, I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but it's an MTHFR mutation and it basically causes low levels of folate and other issues arise from it and I have a lot of them and so I'm like, hmm, maybe I need to bring that up with my doctor just to remind him that I have this condition um, because it could help explain a lot of things that are going on with my like fatigue issues. I don't know if it's from the gallbladder issues or if I'm feeling fatigued for other reasons, but I am going to start taking those over-the-counter meds as soon as I can. And, um, yeah, so there is that information. Okay, so now let's get into the meat of this. Uh, the part that I am least comfortable talking about, uh, but I really feel like it's important to be open and vulnerable and honest about it to help other people and to just let you know that you're not alone if you're dealing with things like I am. Um, I'm diagnosed as bipolar 1 and I suffer with depression and anxiety and I am supposed to always be taking my meds, which is Prozac and Abilify. The Prozac is for the depression, and the Abilify is for agitation, irritation, irritation, mood swings, and uh, other things that I can't think of, but that I experience when I am, oh, like mania, duh. <laughs> so they help control things like that and just keep me more stable. Uh, while the Prozac helps level me out with the depression and both of them together uh, make it so that I don't cry. I don't really feel um, sad the way that a normal person would when I'm on the medications, but I don't feel that numb feeling that I know a lot of other people feel on antidepressants. I just feel less of everything like it's not as amplified it's a lot quieter uh, I don't know if that makes sense but I still feel things I just don't feel them to the fullest in any capacity for anything when I'm taking my meds so sometimes I'll be taking my meds for a long time and I start feeling really good and normal my term is normal so it's like I feel like my normal self um, you know, aside from those smaller issues, and I forget that I don't, like, I forget that I should keep taking my meds. I don't know if that's how to describe it, but it's like, I'm like, well, I'm doing really well. I can stop taking them for a while, and that's, that's like never a good thing to do. It doesn't really take that long for me to quit taking my meds before it sets in, and by it sets in, I mean the depression or the mania or episodes of both coming on. This time around, it was the depression that hit really hard. And it really has been crappy. I have not been feeling myself. I've been struggling with feelings of worthlessness and not feeling like a valuable contributing human being. Um, I feel horrible things and I think horrible things and I've been really worried and anxious and I just suppress it and try to keep it down. Um, I started taking my meds again about seven days ago I think and it took about three days to lift me out of the fog so that I felt kind of normal and more like myself. Like I said I say that a lot but I just mean normal for me and uh, like the where I like to be so um, before I started taking my meds I was feeling really tearful I was crying randomly everything was getting to me I just I couldn't keep the intrusive thoughts away that were telling me how horrible I was or how worthless I was thoughts that are like they're telling me how crappy I am and what a horrible person I am and that I'm not worthy of things that I have or that I'm not worth the love that I receive. Um, I don't know, I guess it's pretty normal for people with depression to feel those things. And it's just like, my mom always had described it as like beating yourself up with a baseball bat. 
So, like, if I were to talk to her about this, she would be like, Heather, put down the bat. Like, stop beating yourself up. Because she does that, too. And she um, often tells me that. And so, I guess that's something that I need to remember. But it is getting better as the medication is starting to work. Today is more of an off day where I'm not really feeling super great. Um, My husband is not home right now. He's at work. And so... Uh, When he's not home, I don't feel as good as I do when he is home. I feel more energetic and I feel more excited and lively when he's home. Um, So he just has a really big impact um, on my life (laughs) and my mental state, which is unfortunate that another human being has such a huge impact on my mental state. But... He really makes me happy and he brings joy to my life. I mean, my kids obviously bring joy to my life. You know, it's not the same because you have to like take care of your children constantly and they need things from you. And I homeschool my girls and so it's just a struggle sometimes to uh, meet my own expectations and do the things that I know need to get done. So it can be really stressful and like disheartening for me. Um, dealing with things. I don't know. I feel really vulnerable. I don't like this. Mm. As you can probably guess, my two-mile walking challenge kind of fell by the wayside. It became something that wasn't that important to me to finish. Uh, I wasn't really able to go for the walks like I had been doing. I had lost that energy that I had that kept me going and I was dealing with pain in my gallbladder area that keeps coming and going and it makes it hard for me to do things like walking. Um, It just makes me want to rest. So uh, between that and then like feeling super depressed kind of out of nowhere, I mean it built up the depression but then it was just like mm, bam, it hit real hard. I just felt like I, I don't know man. I don't know. I dropped everything I was doing. Like all the things that I had going, it was like they all just fell down and I couldn't keep up with everything. (laughs) I don't know if that makes sense, but man, I really don't like talking about this, but I'm also like glad to talk about it. And I just hope that someone out there can relate and knows that they aren't alone. Uh, because I know I'm not alone, but it's still nice to hear from people, I think. So, yeah. So, yeah, that's that. I, uh, don't really have anything else to really talk about. I feel like I've gone over everything. Sorry, I'm rocking. I'm also playing with my cord here and my hands like... Oh gosh, <laughs> I think I'm a little nervous talking about this stuff. Um, just being vulnerable is kind of hard for me. So I don't know. Is it hard for you too? Because it's hard for me, even with my husband or talking to my mom. Like no matter who I'm talking to about it, I still have a hard time with it. So like even talking about this stuff with my husband and just like crying in front of him, it really sucks. But um, I'm really glad that he's there for me and is available to me when I am hurting. So I'm really grateful for that. I hope that playing with this cord isn't causing it to make weird sounds. Like, you know, as I'm like crunching the cord between my hands. I will stop. Stop. Okay. So, yeah, I don't know where I'm going with this anymore. I want to thank you so much for watching and please go ahead and like this video if you enjoyed it or it helped you in any way or made you feel a little less alone in your own journey. Um, Just know that everybody has their problems and their issues and we often record ourselves on the good days. So, I was wanting to record myself today and it is not the greatest of days so I apologize when my energy levels weren't up but I do thank you so much for watching and I hope that you have a good day. Bye!